and shake your booties for black girl nerds. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be with all of you today. Hi, Chiara. Hi. Hi. I love competition shows, especially ones that can incorporate drag. And I love that everyone's singing, singing, singing for real. Vanessa, since the root of the show is singing, I'll begin with you, Vanessa. When you think of all of the voices, your own voice and voices that make you stand up and take notice, what is this, what is a sound you love to hear that you hope to hear from the contestants this season? The sound that we uh, leapt to our feet uh, when we saw the these amazing global uh, contestants from around the world uh, are ones that they made us understand what they were feeling and that that understanding and that transmission of glory made us stand up. And sometimes they weren't singing in, in English. Sometimes they were singing in other languages. So it didn't matter what if we knew what they were saying, but if they made us feel amazing and they were like a thousand percent, uh, they made us stand and give them uh, a standing ovation. So it definitely has happened. And uh, I think the audience is going to be thrilled with not only, you know, the global aspect, but there's so many different unique styles uh, vocally. There are ranges that are unbelievable uh, that when you close your eyes, you can't even believe that it's actually someone else who's singing a song that you might know. Um, and there's some that are very unique, very quirky, but also make you uh, laugh and cry and want to leap to your feet. So it's uh, I I'm just so happy to be a judge in this amazing show. And I think people will not know what to expect, but they're going to they're going to see production value beyond measure and some unbelievable performances. I saw, I was very privy to see some of the performances already. I got a chance to see the first episode and you are not kidding. These are some very talented, talented people and just the array of gathering so many different talented people from across the, gro across the globe is amazing. And let me see insights because uh, I don't know a lot about drag culture in another in other countries. I do here in the United States because that's what I see. But to see the global effect is has been very educational, very entertaining. Trixie, for you, why well, look at the influence on, of drag culture on just popular culture in general? I'm not sure if it gets its flowers enough as it should. It's something as minimal as as the giant eyelashes that girls like to wear nowadays that's a long tenet of drag <laughs> culture a long tenet what do you when you see the end the, the continued influence of drag culture on pop culture on society in general do you feel like it gets the flowers that it deserves well it's like so much of what we know as drag culture comes from like new york ball culture specifically when i was reading the diva rules by michelle visage I mean, that's the group of people that invented the language that drag uses now. So it's like drag is borrowing from ball culture, which is primarily queer people of color, which comes from. So we all are like grabbing and passing on like a game of telephone. I guess I never feel like you stole that. But drag queens also, by definition, basically do a collage of what we see in pop culture and we spit it back out. So it's like we're stolen from, but we're also stealing. You can't hustle a hustler. No, but even on top of that, ballroom culture is taken from black women. So really all of this culture comes from women of color um, and the way, in the, especially in New York, the way they raised their children and these children, you know, interpreting the things that they learned from their mothers and grandmothers and bringing it to the ballroom. And then in turn, you know, so on and so on. So um, I think it all goes back to women, mothers of color. Mm -hmm. Michelle, so on, on that note, now to see this another amazing show come to life as a producer, as a creative mind, how do you feel to see another incarnation of a beautiful show celebrating people who aren't celebrated as often as they should be? As often or, you know, for me, I, I always said, you know, as an ally, we can't stop until we don't have to say gay marriage or equality, mm. but we don't have to say those words anymore. Then that's when, you know, we've won until then it's still a battle. So, you know, all of these kids, like 
if you see somebody on a mainstream show, let's say The Voice or something like that, nine times out of 10, 99 out of 100, it's, you're not going to turn around and see a drag queen standing there because drag queens don't get the opportunities that mainstream performers do. That's just a fact. And then we do a show that not only you have to do drag and you have to do it well, you can't just be throwing a wig on and being, you know, a college frat joke. You have to be a drag queen and then you have to be a good singer. So all of these people have been, you know, honing their craft for years. This is not people who are just dipping their toe into singing. These are singers who just happen to perform in drag. It is such an amazing competition for these singers who probably wouldn't have been able to get a chance, so to speak, on a platform this large. Really, the chances are very small. So this is a platform for every performer who thought they would never get an opportunity like this. And it's so rewarding and so fulfilling because every single performer on that stage is just oozing with talent. Yeah. Completely talent, charisma, just even the dedication, artistry. It's just so many things that are coming together at once. And I hope that that's not lost on the audience to see all of these elements come together. Mm -hmm. Vanessa, do you remember the first drag show you ever saw? I remember I saw the first drag show I ever saw, I think might have been in either Seattle or was here in West Hollywood at like Hamburger Mary. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. Do you remember the first show you ever went to? Uh, it might have been, it, I, again, uh, you know, we're talking, I'm at 58, let's see. Xenon, oh, uh, <laughs> I gotta go <laughs> work, but uh, it was probably like early uh, mid eighties. And I don't know the venue because a lot of the, the clubs would have, you know, sometimes they would have people come up and, and, and sing. Um, uh, but I don't, I, I don't have a good answer for you. I don't know the first, I, I don't know the first time. Although I do know that what I love, and I have four children, my youngest, who is 21 years old, grew up watching Drag Race since she was eight years old. And all her friends, herself and her friends, uh, not only growing up having so many opportunities to see um, uh, queer talent, but also drag queens and expression uh, and and not even judge because of uh, of who I am and what I've exposed her to, but all seeing all her friends get excited uh, about loving drag and that it's so part of, of the US lexicon and and society and pop culture where, you know, growing up from, you know, I was born in the 60s, you know, this was this was not even, uh, you know, I was Lady Bunny was, you know, the, the big drag queen back in the day in New York, um, you know, so you would. And that's a long was, time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for some shade. We love our Lady Bunny. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. So it, it shows me how times have changed and how we have embraced uh, drag as part of our pop culture, which has been wonderful. Um, so there's a big instead of making it uh, something that you had to seek out, it's all over the place, which is fantastic. Absolutely. Trixie, what are you most proud of when you look at this show as premiere? What are you most proud of with this show? Going like, you know, this is crazy. But watching these people compete in a way that, let's just be tacky, in a way that, let's just be on an incredible show. I mean, they're basically giving these young talented, they're basically giving these young talent faces off. It was so surreal to go, we are really sitting here judging drag queens and people like it. I mean, I've been doing drag 15 years just before drag race even started. So I remember when not even the gay guys liked drag queens that much. So there's always these freeze frames of like, this is crazy. It's crazy what we have arrived at. I can only imagine what it feels like for Michelle, you know, to have seen it from further than that. But definitely some of these performances, you're like, I'm so happy this person was born now because now is the time we get to see this person on a global scale. Ooh, this, this is a moment yeah. in time. This is a moment in time that's very exciting. It is. Well, Gina, I thank you. Oh, yes. I was just going to wrap. Thank you for your time. Uh, the episode I saw is amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Shout out to Ebony Lane. That's the first drag queen I ever remember seeing in Los Angeles. Oh, I and, love that. And uh, thank you for your time. Thanks, to you.
Black Girl Nerds. Better shake your booties for Black Girl Nerds.